The vector scope is an essential tool for any audio engineer, especially those of you who concern about face issues when your audio is down mixed uh, to mono. And uh, the Touch Monitor 5 includes a vector scope. It's the same vector scope that we also have on our high end uh, broadcast classic touch monitors. And I'll just show you how to set it up here. In this example, I will be uh, configuring two vector scopes for an AB comparison, typically for, for setups for radios and stuff like that, radio stations. Um, I'll click new and I'll just quickly name it two times VSC. Click on my new application. So an application is a set of inputs and the tools that belong to that. Um, the setup wizard here asks me for a loudness type. The loudness type is not important here, but I have to select one, so I just do that. And I'll set up a second one for my second uh, set of channels, my set, second um, stereo. Uh, as a default, it's called metering. Uh, let's just change that to just A and B. So I can distinguish between the two. I'll just give this another color, yellow. So now I have A and B here. Go to the routing. I select one and two, channels one and two to go to A, three and four to go to B. That's it, now it's set up. Now I just need to configure my view and I press my view here. Uh, I, before I do so, I just go up here in the sidebar presence uh, parameter here and I put it to swipe. That means, that means that on my device, I no longer have my sidebar visible all the time, but when I swipe in from the right, it's there. That means that I have a bit more space on my screen for my vector scopes. I drag this in. This is the A one. You can see it says A up here. Then I take the B one, puts it over here, like that. I also would like to have my face correlator down here just for fun. Now it's basically set up. But before we move on, let me just take you to the parameters of the vector scope. I select it and I can now press edit. And there are, a lot, there, there are not a lot of uh, parameters in here. You have a mode switch. You either show left and right or mid side. And then you have this fine line. Uh, if I put this to on, you might be able to see it on the video here. The line that goes here on the cross, the crossing line here, uh, gets to be a little more fine, actually. Instead of being a solid line, it's more, you can say, dotted. Uh, I do that also on the other one. Put it here. Beside uh, the two top uh, parameters here, I also have my color parameters. It's The colors is like something we have on most of our instruments, so it lets you set the colors of your instrument, the background, background grid, uh, the grid, which is the line here, and then the waveform. Just for demonstration sakes, I put this to green, let's say that. So that's basically it. I've set it up. I have A here, I have B here, slightly different colors, which you will see when we, uh, when we uh, feed some audio to it. I go back here and I go save and I recall my uh, preset here using the recall button and it's now recalled on the device and I'll just take a screenshot real fast so you can see how it looks. You can see that uh, the left side here is, is white and the other one is the green color that we that we chose. So that's basically it. That's the vector scope, a highly usable tool, as I said, for applications where you, uh, where you would be concerned about what happens to your audio when it's, uh, it's, it's down next to mono. So mono compatibility is key here. But in general, you would, in most cases, when you work with stereo mixes, you would want to have a vector scope there. Uh, 
so you would detect issues uh, when you do the work. The Victor School.